Will you wave your hands to him wherever you may be at this time? Will you bless him at this time? Just bless him. Just wave your hands to him. Father, we appreciate your presence. We thank you for bringing us uh, to the first half of 2020. And we thank you because we know that you are with us, taking us to the second half of 2020. We know it's time to recharge. It's time to be renewed. It's time to be strengthened in our innermost being that we may walk in line with your will and your purpose uh, for the second half of 2020. We thank you for all that you have done the first half of 2020. If anything has gone wrong, you are the one uh, uh, that made it possible for all things not to have gone wrong. So we thank you. We thank you for healing us. We thank you for delivering us. We thank you for preserving us. We appreciate you, our Father. We ask that you take all the glory and all the praise. And we ask that you breathe upon your word today. Let it minister grace to every hearer, everyone joining, recharge online, on every location. Let your grace reach them where they are right now. Prosper your word in our lives. Let no one be the same again. Heal, set free, deliver, recharge our spirit, soul, and body. We thank you, Father. I will give you all the glory and all the praise in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Can I hear a believing amen? Uh, wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice, will you say an amen? Type it in, say it, tell somebody beside you, go to the chat and just type it in. Let the Lord know that you're present at Recharge 2020. Praise God. I, I, I bring great greetings from my wife, uh, our kids, and the entire uh, leadership of uh, members of the Elevation Church. And I want to celebrate uh, with my, my friends, uh, pastors, Bimbo and Yemi David. Uh, thank you for all you do to be a blessing to the body of Christ and the leadership of Global Impact Church uh, uh, and all you do around the world and all you've done all through this season. We celebrate you. We celebrate the grace of God on your life and we believe that God who started a good work in you, it will perfect it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now it's time to recharge. I need you to know Global Impact that God is not true with you yet. Uh, there's much more that he wants to do. This is the time to pioneer new things. This is the time to break new grounds. And we need that recharging for us to be able to move ahead and surge ahead into what God has in mind for this season. And God has put a word in my heart that I'd love to share with you today. Uh, uh, again, I want to encourage everyone joining uh, this, this service right now for you to take distractions away from you and arrange yourself properly with rapt attention to hear the word of God and be blessed today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Can I hear you believing? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm sharing uh, today on what it means to position for a recharge. And then what happens when you are positioned for a recharge? What are the things that will happen? Uh, so I'm speaking on these three broad things. Uh, what does it mean to position for a recharge, for God to renew and recharge you? And also, what starts to happen when you are well positioned or, and when you are being recharged? This way, uh, uh, prophetically, uh, position you for what is ahead of you for the next six months of this year and beyond in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I need somebody to know that the divine positioning to take if you really want to be recharged this season is to enter into your rest. And I'm going to try to describe what it means for you to have rest roundabout. And I'm also trying, I mean, going to try to prod you to, to, to labor, according to Hebrews chapter 4, to labor to enter into the rest of God. We all know, let's start from King David. We all know King David. And we knew that David fought many battles in his lifetime. He fought many battles. Uh, but when David passed on, uh, a new season came. And it was a season of rest. It was a season of divine serenity. David passed the baton to Solomon. Solomon took over as a king uh, 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 in Israel. And what happened? What happened was that uh, when 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 Saul, I mean, when, when Solomon took over in First Kings chapter five, when you read from verse one, we saw an account, an account. So uh, this scripture, the, the Lord gave. Uh, uh, to me to help you to anchor your soul, to anchor your soul for a divine position in this season for you to enter into your rest and be recharged. It's a powerful uh, uh, season uh, that many of us may be agitated, unprecedented uh, 
uh, you know, novel COVID-19 pandemic, the disease and all that, many things, things are shutting down around us. The whole world has been brought down to our knees. And uh, uh, I, I needed to understand that God is still in control of everything that is happening around us. And he has a plan for you. He has a plan for me. And we're sharing part of his plans today. First Kings chapter 5 from verse 1 to 4. The Bible says, Now, Iram, the king of Tyre, sent his servants to Solomon because he had that they had anointed him king in place of his father. For Iram had always loved David. Then, verse 2, Then Solomon sent to Iram, saying, You know how my father, David, could not build a house for the, for the name of the Lord is God. God because, the name of the Lord is God because of the wars which were fought against him in every side, or on every side, until the Lord put his foes under his, the sole of, of his feet. But verse 4 says, But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor evil occurrence. And I prophesy over your life this, this day, I decree that there shall be neither adversary nor evil occurrence as you go into uh, the remaining part of 2020. What I wanted to see here is that uh, uh, so many of us are so used to fighting for everything, every inch of breakthrough, every ounce of provision, and, uh, you know, you fight for everything. And if the, the, the truth be told today, we have become accustomed to this type of lifestyle, like the lifestyle of David. Like David, the sword, blood, and sweat have been key ingredients in every spiritual victory. And I need to understand that not every spiritual victory demands sword, blood, sweat, and all those things. Because there's a, a, a new wave of grace and of favor that is coming upon your life this season. And I needed to understand that God is calling you to enter into your rest. That's the place of recharge. It's when we enter into our rest that we, God re recharges us, spirit, soul, and body. Glory be to Jesus. So, uh, 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 you, you shouldn't get used to sweat, blood, and sword for every miracle, for every breakthrough, for every victory. What if I told you that uh, uh, this is about to change this season? Will you believe me if, I, if somebody is here listening to me right now? Will you believe me that God is about to bring you into a new season? It's called the season of rest where there shall be uh, neither adversary nor evil occurrences. Can you say a better amen, somebody? Glory be to Jesus. Uh, uh, God is about to give you rest in ev on every side. Uh, oh God is about to, 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 to change the season of somebody's life and you need to cooperate with God. So if you're used to striving for everything, it's difficult sometimes to imagine that life uh, can be uh, filled with unprecedented breakthroughs without the pain and the drum or the drum beats of war. Because for somebody listening to me today, you're so used to the drum beat of war. At every instance, you want to give it to somebody. You want to cut down somebody. You want to, you know, I know we have authority in Christ, but it's not, it's not for any fly. It's not for anything at all. It's not, it, you don't have to live in strife, in animosity, fighting for every ounce of provision, fighting for every inch of breakthrough. That's coming to an end in your life this season in the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. So Solomon said, my, 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 my reign and my life has been characterized differently. You know, God looked at David. He said, your hand is too full of blood. You can't build a house for me. Yeah, you can't build a house for me. Your hand is too full of blood. You are always fighting. I know you, you, you have been winning. And you are a man after my own heart. But God said, no, but you are not going to build a house for me. Because this hand is too full of blood. And that's the way some Christians are. We just love to quarrel. Love to break down. We, 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 we don't build, we break down. <laughs> David broke down many things. You know, he, he, he fought Goliath. He did this and that. But <laughs> he didn't really build 
anything that is a legacy or a monument or a memorial that we can account for. Glory be to Jesus. God said, leave that for somebody that is coming with a new season, a season of rest, where according to 1 Kings chapter 5 and verse number 4, uh, 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 there shall be neither. Said God, uh, uh, Solomon said there, but now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There's neither adversary no, if we occurrence. I say it again, that's go into the second half of 2020. There shall be neither adversary nor evil occurrence. Enjoy rest on every side in the name of Jesus. Can I buttress that one more time so that somebody can understand what I'm talking about? I'm not talking about the fact that you will not sweat at all. I'm saying that God will bless your labor so much it will not look like you labored. No, you labored, but it will not look like you labored. Because an end has come to fruitless labor in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the way to key into that is to enter into your rest. We labor from the standpoint of rest. Even when I release my faith for the things that God wants to do in my life, I don't release my faith out of agitation or fretting or anxiety. I release my faith from the standpoint of rest. Because in Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible says uh, that uh, those who have believed, they have entered into their rest. You need to believe and then you enter into his rest. Isaiah 53 from verse number 1, he said, Who has believed the, the, our report? Unto whom the hand of God is being released. Who has believed our report? Unto whom the hand of God is being released. You need to believe the report of the Lord. Then you see the hand of God. You see the hand of God, Isaiah 53 and verse 1. And Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 3 that I was talking about, uh, can, can, you, can you put that on the screen for me? Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 3, he said, For we who have believed do enter that rest. As he has said, so I saw in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the earth. Yeah. He said the works were finished before the foundation of the earth. But they will not enter it because they did not believe. Look at verse 4 there. He said, for he spoke in a certain place. On the seventh day, in this way, uh, uh, he said, on the seventh day, in this way, God rested on the seventh day from all his labor. God rested from all his labor. Man was created for God's rest. If you want to be recharged, you need to learn to enter into your rest. God walked for six days and rested on the seventh. And by the time, he, on the sixth day, before he ended, he created man. Man's first uh, uh, complete day was the day of God's rest. We were created into God's Sabbath. This is a season that God is bringing the whole world on their knees, demanding a Sabbath from us, for us to rest. And if you choose to still live in anxiety and fear and fretting, you may miss out of what God is doing this season. Ladies and gentlemen, if you really want to recharge this season, you must consciously labor to enter into God's rest. Labor to enter into God's rest. To know in your Noah that the works were finished before the foundation of the earth. To keep reminding yourself that the works were finished before the foundation of the earth. And that, that, that our God is a God of times and seasons. And there are things he wants to do in your life this season. And all he wants is just for you to align. Enter your rest. Enter your rest. If there's a person listening to me right now and you are single or married, remember, the key to entering into your marital destiny is to enter into your rest. God put Adam to sleep in the book of Genesis there. Put Adam to sleep. And it was while Adam was sleeping, his wife was being constructed. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. It's in the place of rest that we fulfill our marital destiny. Uh, uh, when you enter into your rest in God, you are not sleeping and waking up agitating. Who is going to marry me? Where is my husband or where is my wife? As you have come to recharge this season, re allow God to recharge you fully. Enter into your rest. Let God do what only he can do. The Bible says that he that, that, that watches over us, he never sleeps, or, uh, he never slumbers. So if he does not sleep, he doesn't slumber. He wants you to sleep and enter into your rest when you're supposed to be resting. So that you can allow him do the things that he wants to do in your life. Many people are spoiling 
uh, 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 the work of God in their lives by being hyperactive. When God says, I want to speak to you. I want to guide you. I want to direct you. But I need you to enter your rest. Position for a recharge. By the time I finish with you, nobody will recognize you again. Your life will take, you want to take the great turn in a different direction because there's something that I want to do in your life this season. Say amen, somebody. Uh, say it better, amen, somebody. There's something that God is doing in your life this season. It demands that you enter into the fullness of your rest. Uh, uh, that's how God is going to construct a future life, I mean, a life partner for somebody. Construct a new business for somebody. Construct a new idea that will sink into your mind and into your soul and bring you into uh, uh, the limelight and be, be, be become a leader in our world today. That that's, It's in the secret place. In the place of entering your rest and doing away with all the struggles and all the fear and all the anxiety. In Genesis 26 there, you see another man that literally operated from the place of rest. His name is Isaac. Isaac operated from the place of rest. Just like Solomon operated from the place of rest. Isaac operated from the place of rest. Uh, his own was slightly different from Solomon. Solomon, God put him there because he wanted him to institute things and do things. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are going to enjoy divine establishment, as you go into the end of this year, you must end, understand that peace roundabout, not having to fight for everything, will be key. People who fight for everything don't get to build anything. If you fight or before you get everything, you may not be able to build anything. Because before you fight, fight, fight on this job. And he said eventually, oh, eh, I can't stay there again. Everybody's against me. That, uh, he, he worked for eight months. When you look at such people's CV, you just see it like a touch and go, touch and go, touch and go thing. But people, uh, it's time for us to enjoy divine establishment. God wants to plant you in an industry. Plant you on your mountain of influence. And give you favor and peace there. Until you build and you are built up and you are established in what God has called you to. Enough of today, I'm into this. Tomorrow, I'm into that. No rest, no peace. You're fighting, fighting somebody. Uh, they lock up the shop. Uh, they, they, uh, they're not going to pay you your salary. All those things must come to an end. As you recharge this season, God is starting something new in your life. In Genesis 26, when you read from verse 15, the Bible talks about, uh, about Isaac there. The Bible says in, in, verse, in verse 15 there, Genesis 26, now the Philistines had stopped all the wells which his father, his father's servant, a dog in the days of Abraham, his father, and they had filled them with, with, with health. And Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us. You are much mightier than us or than we. Like it's written here in New King James. Then Isaac departed with, with peace, with rest. When people say, eh, you know, rejection depends on whether you accept it or not. Yeah. If somebody says, I don't want you, somebody's working out of your life, somebody is breaking up, somebody is doing this and all that, it depends on it's about perspective. Because some rejection lead to uh, they, they lead to the open door into destiny. Some rejection is actually redirection, not rejection. So it's about mindset, it's about perspective. If you are operating from the place of rest, when you are rejected this season, you see it as redirection. So you don't over-internalize it until you become depressed. No, you see it as re redirection. If somebody walks out of your life this season, maybe in a love relationship, see it as redirection. God is leading me into something new, something better. Something better. Some of us who have enjoyed marital bliss for many years now, haven't been in other relationships before we got into this one. We saw it like great redirection. I'm forever grateful to God that he made me marry my wife and not one or two other people that I dated before because it's redirection. Then, I mean, somebody walked out of my life before. I thought it was rejection. I didn't know it was redirection. Glory be to Jesus. It's not rejection, it's redirection. God is ordering your steps. I am the Lord God, your Redeemer, the one who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way that you ought to go. God is leading you in the way that you ought to go. And you need to uh, understand that and take it as your word from God today. You are not rejected, you are redirected. Say amen, somebody. And say it after me. Say, I'm not rejected. I am, I've been redirected. I've been redirected. My God will redirect you this season. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. So let nothing break your heart. Isaac was redirected. Abimelech said, no, go away from us. We don't want you here. You are mightier than we. And Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gera and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the well of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. So these Philistines are, were after Abraham's livelihood, just spoiling all the work that he has done. But God was leading Isaac to those old places. And then he, he, would, he, he would dig the well again. You know, the Bible says the Philistines had, had stopped it uh, after the death of Abraham. Uh, he called them by the names which his father had called them. Isaac, uh, Isaac's servant also dug in the valley and found a well of running water. Not just water uh, that you have to be pulling up. Spring that, is flow that was flowing on their own. Because it was redirection. He didn't take it as rejection, so he moved to another place, and in this place, he found something better. We, you will find something better. As you go into this year, you may, have, you may have lost a job, but I tell you it's redirection. In the place of rest and recharge, God will open your eyes to see that this is redirection. And as you take it as redirection, it will lead you. As you trust him, as you enter into your rest, like Isaac here, it will lead you into another place. And what you will find will be better. Better salary. Better business. Greater ideas. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Say amen somebody if you believe that. Hallelujah. Better. Something better. This place is running water there. But, but the Bible says the headsman of Gera quarreled with him. Uh, with Isaac's headman. Saying this water is ours. Because Isaac was operating from the place of rest. What did he do? He just moved on. He just moved on. Again, I, 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 I am a blessed man. I can't just be fighting with sword all the time. You know, I, I need to enter into my rest and allow God to fight my battles. But I'm not going to stay still because I'm going to do something else. I'm going to uh, uh, allow him to redirect me and I'm going to do something else. The problem with many Christians is that when we get into when we encounter an adversary, is it that we allow the adversary to break our heart to the point where we think God is no longer faithful? Or we stop fighting in the spirit and start fighting in the flesh, saying things that we're not supposed to say, behaving as if we are not Christians. Yet, if you're a Christian, even when you encounter an adversary, when there's a quarreling, you know, an enmity, you, you, you ask yourself, what will Jesus do? Because you behave like Jesus. Jesus was on the cross and he said, Lord, <coughs> He said, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Forgive them for, because they don't know what they do. You operate from the standpoint of rest. Jesus knew that his next appointment from that cross was the right hand of the Father. So if you know, if you know that your next move, your next level is the right hand of the Father, will you be fighting with ordinary human beings who know nothing? Because the Bible says, if they knew, they would not have crucified the King of glory. The people fighting you right now, if they knew, that you are a covenant child of God. That the blessing of Abraham is upon your life. They won't bother. Because everything they do to you, they are pushing you further into the blessing. Pushing you further into what God wants to do this season. But you need to know it even if they don't know it. It's a tragedy if they don't know and you don't know. <laughs> That's a tragedy. You, you need to know it even if they don't know it. So that as they are doing what they are doing, you know you are moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost into your next level. So you are filled with joy, operating from the standpoint of rest. Say amen, somebody. Yeah, you are filled with joy. You are operating from the standpoint of rest. So you are unperturbed. You are unmoved by all the things going on around you. I've come with this word uh, uh, for somebody here at Richard 2020. I want you to know that my God is moving you to your place of rest. That's the place of recharge. That's when we connect, where we connect with God vitally and allow him to fight our battles. We hold our peace. We stay in the place of our authority. We don't mess the grace of God up. And we, we allow him to do what he wants to do. Don't fight for a husband. Yeah. It's God that gives a husband. The scripture says, houses and riches are from the Father, but a good wife is from the Lord. Don't fight for anything that God cannot give you. What you fight to get, you keep fighting to retain. What God gives you, it gives you, I mean, it's the one that supplies the grace to retain it. Are you still with me today? Glory be to Jesus. 
Isaac understood this as a walk from the place of rest. So everywhere that they quarreled, they, the Bible says in that place, uh, uh, they said the water is ours. So he called the name of the place Isaac because they quarreled with him. He just said, these people are too quarrelsome. Let me move somewhere else. Then they dug another well according to divine redirection. He didn't take it as rejection. He took it as redirection. He dug another well. Uh, and from there, uh, like, like, like the scripture says, he dug another well. They quarreled over that one again. He called it Sitna. Called that place Sitna, uh, which means enmity. Enmity. And he moved from there and dug another well. And they quarreled over that again. So he called, uh, uh, the Bible says, and they did not quarrel over that, sorry. They didn't quarrel over that. And that's how God brought him to Rehoboth. That's where I'm going. God is bringing somebody to Rehoboth this season. God is bringing you to Rehoboth. What's the meaning of Rehoboth? Rehoboth means uh, a, a, a place of, of, of space. Rehoboth means open space or spaciousness. Open space or spaciousness. That's where God is bringing you this season. As we enter into your rest, my God is bringing you to Rehoboth. Say amen, somebody. The scripture says there that God brought him to Rehoboth. Uh, he, he said he called that place Rehoboth because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. I prophesy over somebody here today, the next six months of this year, enjoy unprecedented fruitfulness in the name of the Lord Jesus. My God is making room for you. You also need to make room for him. You need to make room for him. You need to make room for him. You need to make room for him in your heart. You need to make room for him on your mind. You need to allow God to take his place in your life. As you make room for him this season. There's a need to make room for God. To make room for God this season. Because he wants to do something new in your life. As you enter into your rest. God is going to start to show you the different ways and the different areas where he wants you to make room for him in your life. And that brings me uh, to the story, an important story of, of the man called Obed-Edom in the Old Testament. Second Samuel uh, chapter 6, when you read uh, verse 10 and, and, and uh, down to 12, the Bible spoke about a man who had space, a space in his life for God, for the ark of God. See, when you step into your rest, like I said, God is going to start to reveal to you where you need to make more room for him. We buried him here in 2 Samuel chapter 6, when you read from verse 10, the Bible says, So David uh, would not move the heart of the Lord uh, with him into the city of David. He was afraid. He was living in fear and all that. He didn't create space for the ark of God in the city of David. But the Bible says, But David took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittites. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, Three months. And the Lord blessed Obedidom and all his household. To the end that when David, uh, now the Bible says it was told to David, saying that the Lord has blessed the house of Obedidom and all that belongs to him because of the heart of God. So David went and brought, now David changed his mind. Yeah. Uh, may you be like David this season. You will make room for God in your heart. All the things, you know, on your mind. The worry, the thoughts, the anxiety, the fretting, they need to go. As you go into the next six months, travel light. Let your, your, your mind be, be, be free for God. Uh, make, let there be Rehoboth in your heart. Uh, make room for God in your heart. The Lord has made room for us. Uh, you to create an open space for God to feel in your heart. Create an open space in your heart and in your mind. You know, it's possible for the mind of a man to be cluttered. It's possible for the art of a man to also be cluttered. There are matters of the mind and there are matters of the heart. Matters of the mind and matters of the heart. How do I mean? Uh, when your mind is filled with evil thoughts, when your mind is filled with fear and fret and anxiety, that's a matter of the mind. You have too many things on your mind, God cannot find a space. Yeah, you are like David when he refused to take the ark of God into his house. But when you free your mind, you start to think glorious thoughts. In the place of rest, as you have come to recharge, God wants to load your mind with new thoughts. Glorious thoughts. The same thing in the heart of man. The heart can be filled with bitterness. 
Yeah. The heart can be filled with bitterness. The heart can be filled with envy, guilt, condemnation. An end has come to all those things in the name of Jesus as you free your heart from condemnation, from bitterness. You see, it's like making room. It's like coming to your Rehoboth, the place of, of space, open space that God wants to fill. And God is filling your heart with new wine this season. Your heart will indict a new matter. In the name of Jesus, I decree that the hall of joy is coming over you this season. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God is filling your heart afresh. That should be the prayer of your heart this season. Lord, help me to make room for you. Help me to make room for you. Because when we make room for God in our heart, God has a way of filling it. He has a way of filling it. And I speak prophetically to somebody here today. An hand has come to the hold of bitterness in your life. Let go of that man. Let go of that money. Let go of that business because something new is coming from heaven to you and until you let go of the past and create a necessary ending to the things that hold you down, God may not be able to do what he wants to do in this new season. He said, remember not the former things and the things of old. And for somebody here today, prophetically I speak to you, that may be a person. That may be some money that somebody has held down. That you are literally cursing the person because of that money right now. That may be an opportunity that you feel somebody took your opportunity. And because of that, you are so bitter. Your heart is filled with bitterness, with malice and all that. There's no room for the heart of God. Like he came into the house of Obedidom to come into your house. Where just because God is in your heart, everything around you starts to prosper. That would be your testimony this season. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Can somebody say a better amen today? You remember in 2 Kings chapter 4, when Elisha will bless the widow woman, who said, I don't have anything but a jar of oil. Elisha said, create Rehoboth. Yeah. Create Rehoboth. Open space. That's what Rehoboth means. Spaciousness. He said, create Rehoboth. Go borrow vessels. Just make space for God to fill. Can I speak to somebody prophetically? Just like Elijah spoke to that widow woman. It's time for you to make space for God around you, in your home, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Make space for Jehovah. When you have entered into your rest, and God has recharged you, one of the things he wants to do is to take away all the things that occupy space. God wants you to take them away, to throw them away. Yeah, casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. That's how we recharge fully. That's how we create space for God to fill. And I pray over you this season that grace comes upon you to cast your cares, to empty your heart of negativity, to empty your mind of of of, of self-defeating thoughts in the name of the Lord Jesus. Can somebody shout a believing amen if you believe it today? God is at work in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. And I see him moving in your life like never before. As I start to round up, you know, in the remaining time that I have, I also want to say that when you have entered into your rest, like I said before, you operate from the standpoint of rest. And what that does is that it helps you to pay attention. It helps you to pay attention. It helps you to pay attention. When you start to operate from the standpoint of rest, you will start to pay better attention. Better attention. You know uh, uh, what, 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 what happens to uh, uh, the, the sons of this prophet in 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. They approached uh, Elijah the prophet. Can you put that, that scripture for me? 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 1. The Bible says, these sons of the prophet, they were obviously operating from the standpoint of rest. They consciously brought God into everything around them. Just like I've described about Isaac, about uh, 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 Obed-Edom. These sons of the prophet, 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 1, they said, uh, the Bible says, the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, see now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. They want a space. You know, we're still talking about space. They want a space. This place is too small for us. We need to create space for God to fill. And the man of God said, uh, they asked him, said, please let us go to Jordan and let every man take a, a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So the man of God, just like God, gave them a go ahead. Go and create space because I want to dwell with you. Uh, and he answered and said, go. Verse 3, then he said, uh, then one said, please consent to go with your servants. 
they recognized the fact that they needed God in their life. Like as, just like you have come to, to recharge, uh, is that you want God in your life. Then don't crowd him out. Don't close him out. When you are on, uh, operating from the point of rest and recharge, what happens is that you, you start to learn to pay attention. You, you, when you even seem to get into trouble, God is always there to bail you out because uh, uh, it's a mistake of the head, not of the heart. God is always there. I want you to know as we go into the rest of this year, God will be there all the way. Look at what happened here. The only thing that God requires of you is that to prove that you are operating from the standpoint of rest, he wants you to pay attention to the things that are important, the things that matter. In verse 3 here, then he said, consent to go with, with your servant. And he answered, I will go with you. So Elisha went with them, which symbolically looks like God just being with them. And verse 4, so he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. Verse 5, but as one was cutting down a tree, the high on fell. The, the, the high on axe head fell into the water. And he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. Maybe somebody is listening to me right now, watching Richard with us today, and is saying, Oh, I've lost so much in the last half of 2020. Can I uh, speak into your life prophetically today? That that which you have been lost shall be found this season. As you go into the next six months, you are going to walk into unprecedented divine provision, unprecedented restoration. Can I get a better amen to that? Unprecedented restoration in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, but one thing that God is asking of you this season is that you pay attention. Pay attention to details. Pay attention to what matters. Because when this guy cried out, Alas, master, it was borrowed. Oh, I'm going to be indebted. Oh, you know, this is happening in my business. Uh, uh, the, 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 the Bible says, so the man of God, so the man of God said, uh, uh, so the man of God said, where did it fall? And that's the question I want to ask somebody today, or what I want you to pay attention to, that as you go into the next half, recharged from this place, one of the things that should happen to you after you have been recharged is grace to pay attention to instruction and to details. Details. Where did it fall? And he showed him the place. One of the sons of the prophet who was using the axe knew where the axe head fell. And because of that, the prophet could cut a tree. The Bible says, so he cut off a stick and threw it in there, in that place. And the tree he threw there, the stick he threw there, made the iron to float. That's a miracle. Because you threw a stick, then the iron that has sunk started to float. But you know, you can imagine when the prophet asked uh, the son of the prophet to say, where did it fall? And say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure the prophet may have said, well, uh, I'm not sure I can help you. Because the idea God gave me now is to put a stick in the place where it fell. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand, God wants you to pay attention to the things that matter. Prioritize your life as you go into the second half of 2020. Prioritize your life when you operate from the standpoint of rest and recharge. You start to uh, realize that God will be pump, prompting you, showing you things, helping you to, to prioritize your life and to pay attention to the things that matter. May that grace come upon you this season. May you not be a busybody in another man's business. May you start to pay attention to the things that matter. So that when God shows up, you can say, God, this is it. This is what I want you to fix. And you will get unprecedented miracles in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lastly, uh, uh, today, lastly today, when you enjoy a recharge and you enter into your rest. The rest is not, for not, uh, it, 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 it's not just for anything. Or the, it's not for nothing. You know, the rest is not just for, for nothing. Recharge is not just for anything. It's not, it's not for, you know, nothing at all. Because what's, what's the purpose of a recharge when you're not going to do anything? I just want somebody to know today that one of the reasons why God is recharging you this season is because God wants you to bring forth. God wants you to bring forth. This is a season to bring forth. A season to bring forth. Isaiah 66, and I'm going to close there. Isaiah 66, I'm going to close there. 
from, from verse 5, Isaiah 66 and verse number 5. I'm going to close there. Isaiah 66 and verse number 5. Oh, this season, you are going to bring forth like never before. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my God will grant you speed. The journey of 40 days will not take you 40 years. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the journey of 40 days will not take you 40 years. You will bring forth according to the time of life. Isaiah 66 and verse number 5. Hear the word of the Lord. You who, uh, who, who tremble at his word. Your brethren who hated you. Who cast you out for my name's sake. Said, let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy. But they shall be ashamed. Look at verse number 6. He said, the sound of noise uh, from the city, a voice from the temple and a voice of, uh, of the Lord who fully repay his enemies. Verse 7, before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came, before her pain came, she delivered a male child. Verse 8 says, who has heard of such things? <laughs> That's the question people will be asking. Who has heard of this kind of thing? Because the rate at which you are going to be bringing forth as we go into the six months, I mean, the last six months of this year is going to be unprecedented. I prophesy over you today as we are recharged and renewed this season. The hand of God comes upon you to bring forth. Your recharge is just not for, it's not for nothing. It's not for you to sit down, uh, you know, and, and do nothing or not bathing anything. The Bible says, who, had, who has heard of such, such, such a thing? Who has seen such, such things? Shall the health be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor. Glory be to Jesus. Oh, your labor will bring forth. There shall be no empty labor in your life again. There shall be no protracted labor again. As soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. May your labor re, re, uh, uh, result into unprecedented fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. That's the end game for recharge. As you live recharge, you are going to bring forth in the name of Jesus. My God grants you speed to bring forth in the name of Jesus. Shall I bring to the time of labor, uh, the time of birth, it says in verse 9. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause to deliver? Says the Lord, shall I who caused to de uh, who caused delivery shut up the womb? Says your God, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all you who love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all you who mourn uh, for her. And I speak into your life this season that your season of mourning is over. Uh, your season of rejoicing is here. The one who brings to the place of delivery, he said, I will not shut up the womb. Uh, your womb will not be shut this season. As you are recharged, receive grace to bring forth. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I prophesy over you today. An end has come to abortion. Abortion of dream, abortion of destinies. In the name of Jesus, an end has come to miscarriages. Whether in biological children or divine ideas, ministry ideas, great business ideas, great career advancement ideas that God is bringing your way this season. They shall no longer be miscarried. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I prophesy over you today, your recharge is leading to unprecedented fruitfulness. The hand of God shall be seen upon your life and the name of Jesus shall be glorified in your life. Will you lift your two hands to Jesus and just bless him and just declare, I receive every word, every word spoken. I receive it. I believe it. I believe the report of the Lord uh, uh, and I will see the hand of God. The second half of 2020 for me shall be filled with unprecedented fruitfulness. Grace uh, to leap over the wall. You will run through a troop and leap over the wall. In the name of the Lord Jesus, grace is supplied to you. No more struggle. In the name of the Lord Jesus, an end has come to adversaries throwing you here and there. An end has come to evil. In the name of Jesus, enjoy divine rest all around you. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and we give you praise. And if there's anyone hearing the sound of my voice right now, uh, you've come to recharge because God wants to turn your life around. But if you're far from Jesus, 
if you don't know him as your Lord and personal Savior, I want to pray for you right now. Or maybe uh, you, you gave your life to Christ before, but you backslid into sin. This is a time to repent. This is a time to come closer. This is a time uh, to connect with God that you may become a friend of God. Because those are the people that God delights in working with. And I want to say a quick prayer with you uh, 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 be, 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 before I allow the conference to go on to other things. Uh, will, will you bow down your heads if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus or you want to give your life to Jesus? Put your hands on your heart with me and say, Lord Jesus, oh, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I cannot save myself. Uh, say, come into my life, Jesus. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Forgive me my sins and cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I open up my heart to you today. Fill it up with your spirit. My heart is like the house of Obedidon. I allow your heart to come into my heart today. Holy Spirit, fill me afresh. Make this life fruitful. Make it prosperous. I yield it to you. Guide, lead, and direct. Recharge me from inside out and give me a new beginning. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you just said that prayer with me, God has started something new in your life and he that began a good work in you, he will perfect it in the name of Jesus. I hope that you have locked on, I mean, locked your faith with every pronouncement today because every pronouncement is going to bring the hand of God to bear in every situation in your life. No more sorrow. Peace in the name of Jesus. Uh, I want to again appreciate uh, Pastors Bimbo and Yami Davis for the opportunity to be a part of Retired 2020. Thank you, my friends, uh, for having me on your platform. May the grace of God continue to rest upon Global Impact Church worldwide. And may God enlarge your territory and cause uh, this ministry to continue to prosper in an unprecedented manner. And may God bless every leader, every worker, everyone making things happen at the Global Impact Church. Uh, we'll bless you with the blessing of God today. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ rest upon you and your household in Jesus' precious name. God bless you and have a fantastic rest of the conference.